John Oliver raised awareness on an issue that we might have all already known about, but we didn't really understand the severity of it. Televangelists are ripping people off, and they're getting away with it legally. Now, he gave lots of really great examples uh, during his segment on this particular topic, and he did a great job in making me look into this a little further and realizing just how much money televangelists take from people who are desperate, people who want some answer in life, they want to be saved, they're going through a tragic time, whether it's with their families or financially, and the way that televangelists take advantage of them is disgusting. So let me give you a few examples. Now Mike Murdoch, a televangelist who shamelessly bragged in front of his congregation about purchasing not one but two private jets with straight cash, and Kenneth Copeland, a televangelist who along with his equally opportunistic wife Gloria, calls his private jet a preaching machine that he uses only for church activities, yet was revealed to use it to fly to luxury ski resorts and gaming trips to India to hunt exotic animals. So this is something that you can expect to happen time and time again when you donate money to these televangelists. They'll say, no, 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 look, we need that money. It's seed money, right? You give it to us, we use it to do missionary work, which they rarely do, and then God will give you money and give you luck and give you all these great things in your life to help you out with your problems. It's disgusting because they prey on the powerless. They say it's to seed your faith and it's called a prosperity gospel. So don't worry, Jesus wants you to be rich even though it says in the Bible that you should give up all of your worldly possessions and follow Jesus, all of it, not, <laughs> can you imagine, you go to, Jesus returns, you go to pick him up in your private jet. <laughs> He's like, wait, wait, dude, I told you to get rid of all your worldly possessions. No, 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 it's okay. This is a preaching machine. Oh, she's like, oh, I didn't know that. Dude, you got a preaching machine? That's badass. I'm in. Right? Jesus said, it is harder for a rich man to get into heaven than for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. And these guys somehow turn it around and say, yeah, give me two private jets. But I mean, I, I don't live in this bubble, so I am, I, I can't believe it. I, I'm shocked by how how much suckers people are, right? Yep. Like, you, it comes as a surprise to you that he went to a luxury ski resort with his private jet? What did you think he was going to do with it? Really go use it to preach and to help the poor? It's a fucking private jet. There's a million other ways to help the poor that's a thousand times more efficient. How could you not know that? I, I feel bad, you know, criticizing those who believe in this because they're desperate. You know, they're going through a tough time in their lives, they are powerless, and some might criticize them as dumb or naive, but the reality is you don't know what their stories are, and you don't know what they're going through in their lives. And sometimes they might exhaust all options, they might be completely lonely in a tragedy that they're dealing with, and so all of a sudden here's this great speaker, someone who's preaching to them and making something sound so great and so, so alluring, and they feel tempted by it, and they give in, and it's sad because some people will be in debt and these preachers will tell them, you need to give us $1,000 because if you give us that $1,000, well, we can somehow use that to bring you luck and bring you prosperity. Well, I mean, it's the oldest scam in the book. Give me $1,000 today, I'll give you $10,000 tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you give the guy $1,000, lo and behold, you never get that $10,000. Exactly. I mean, this is the, the longest of all long cons, right, religion. And look, this sounds terrible, but think about it in context of other religions. Some Muslim uh, preachers convince you to give up your whole life. Yeah. They say, strap on that bomb and go over there and kill yourself. Look, these guys, they maybe they give up money, they give up $1,000. Some of them do lose their lives because they, they tell them to pray instead of actually getting treatment for cancer. But at least they're not blowing other people up. So, I mean, and they look at it for all the religions. Again, for Muslims, 72 virgins in heaven? How could you possibly believe that, right? Yeah. My favorite is Salman Rushdie tells a story about how that might have been a misinterpretation. That it might have been, and this is literally true, that it might have been 72 dates, as in the, the, the fruit, okay? And so imagine the look on Muhammad Atta's face. He gets up there, he's like, all right, <laughs> I give him my 72 virgins. They're like, enjoy these dates. He's like, whoa, 72. What have I done? But people believe in this insanity. Now, these people, unfortunately, yeah are being robbed blind. So Gloria Copeland is another one of these televangelists. She's the wife of a, t a very famous televangelist. And I want to give you an example of some of the stuff that she tells people that just makes me sick to my stomach. She says, we know what's wrong with you. You've got cancer. The bad news is we don't know what to do about it except give you some poison that will make you sicker. So she's trying to make it seem as though chemo's not the answer, right? Mm -hmm. Chemo is a bad idea. There are other ways for you to treat your cancer. 
Now, which do you want to do? Do you want to do that, or do you want to sit here on Saturday morning, hear the Word of God, and let faith come into your heart and be healed? Hallelujah. That, you're not just messing with people's financial lives, you are messing with their health, okay? With their livelihood, their health, their entire lives. And it's incredible because they do this under the guise of religion, under the guise of we are people who care about you and want to help you. And that's the worst part about it. They're preying on the powerless. The people who have the worst ailments, the people who have the worst financial issues. And remember, they get to live their lives without any tax issues, right? Because any money that they get is tax exempt because it's a religious organization. Okay, so by the way, what happened to Bonnie Parker? She died. She kept praying, and of course that didn't work. She didn't get medical treatment. They took her money right before she died. So I guess it was mission accomplished for them, and then she passed away. Then her, uh, you know, daughter found out uh, that about the letters and now is, uh, you know, trying to fit, get to the bottom of it. Bless her heart for that. So then uh, John Oliver did a great thing. He went and investigated these guys, and he, he went to Robert Tilton's Word of Faith Worldwide Church and started uh, sending him letters. And he's like, okay. Um, Hey, I found out about you guys, and they're like, "Okay, great." Give us some money. <laughs> yeah, give them money. And then they would do this funny thing. Again, it's such an obvious scam, right? They send him a dollar and say, "Okay, now send it back with uh, nine more dollars." What, okay, <laughs> what was the point of you sending me a dollar? You know why? They're earning your trust. They're like, "Look, you could keep the dollar. Aren't I great?" Right? And invariably, enough of those people send back the ten dollars, the thirty-seven dollars, all these weird increments that they keep asking for. Yep. And next thing you know, he said he's twenty-six letters deep. Okay, and they've already uh, uh, removed him of three hundred and nineteen dollars through yeah. that process, and oh, the whole time, don't worry, God's on your side. God's coming to your help. Okay, you're gonna get really rich. Jesus, man, literally. Uh, and and how sick do you have to be, where you think, oh, the people who are most desperate are the ones I should pray on the most. They'll be the easiest. Marks, yeah. right? And and you got Creflo Dollar. We've talked about him in the past. Sixty-five million dollar jet, uh, and he was asking for that. I mean, to give you a sense, a private jet is a lot of money, man. Yeah. Sixty-five million dollars. And the part of it that drove me crazy is that he told uh, you know his followers that he needed that sixty-five million dollar jet in order to do missionary work. But an investigation revealed that that jet can't actually carry supplies to countries where people need them. So it was all BS. He just wanted a private jet so he could do his thing. So he got a, a lot of heat for that in the press, back down, and then when the press wasn't looking, went back and said, yeah, now give me the money. <laughs> okay. Uh, one of the guys uh, calls his mansion, Copeland does, a parsonage. And to Anna's point, lives tax-free in that mansion because it's a parsonage. I'm a church. I'm a church. So what John Oliver did, he set up his own church. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And God bless him. I mean, we could all do it. I mean, it's preposterous. It's preposterous. It's incredibly simple to set up your church and then go out tax free. Yeah. What do you think? We turn young Turks into a church? So do your religion. Okay. Think about it. Uh, with the, <laughs> our uh, high priestess, yes. uh, Anna Kasparian. A no judgment zone. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, you know what? That's probably the best religion out there. Yeah. We might as well do it tax free.